Well, I thought I'd uh, see what this thing can do. Um, it uh, is a lot of power, so I've put a, a I put a dummy load on it just to make that back end happy. But I've gone ahead and decided to uh, disconnect VCC on certain things. So I I disconnected the uh, so 15 volts comes in here and. Uh, it's on these red wires, so anything you see red is 15 volts. So it's color coded. Anything you see yellow is 10 volts, and anything you see as uh, violet is um, minus 5 volts. Um, and so uh, the 15 comes in, it goes down a rail here and goes into this section over here. So I've disconnected the 15 that goes from here into here. So th there's a feed through. So everything is disconnected except for just this, okay? And um, it wasn't working right, and so I decided to go backwards a step. And that is uh, to take a look at these uh, DC to DC converters. And uh, it seems as though we have some problems. So let me hook up a ground and turn on my voltmeter. Let's see here. How do we get this all on camera? Uh, maybe I can put this back over here. Is that, no, that's not going to work. This thing's a little bit too big to photograph all at the same time. So I'll just have, I'll just have to swing, I'll swing the camera over and we can take, we can take a look at it. All right, so uh, let me put in 15 volts. I will apply it here. And we're drawing about 200 milliamps. And I'm now gonna probe the plus 10 and the minus five, so. Let's go over here. I'll turn this on. All right. So here is the. Uh, let's see. Oops. I don't want to apply power there. I'm sorry. I goofed up. I goofed up. Um, I have the power disconnected from this. So I'm going to apply 15 volts right directly on to here. And I'm not getting any current draw at all. So now we come over here. This should be plus 15. It is, this should be plus 10, eh, a little high, but there's an adjustment here. This should be minus five and it's minus five. Okay, so I say this DC to DC converter is doing its job, all right? Let's go to the next one. Uh, the next one is here. Let's put 15 onto it. And then let's measure some voltages. We have plus 15, where is plus 15? Oops, I shorted out to ground there. That wasn't very smart. Okay, plus 15. Here's our plus 10. 11, okay, it's okay. And here's our minus 5. Oops, it's minus 11. Yeah, so this one's dead. Put an X, I'll put an X on him. Let's see here. Uh, where's a good pen? Let's do this. Okay, I'm going to put an X on him. He's dead. And then we'll measure... Uh, I'll measure this one way down here. I'll put uh, I'll put 15 on him, and we'll measure him. All right. So now we can come come back over to our meter. Uh, we have plus 10 is eh, a little high, and then minus five. That one's good too. So. I have two good regulators and one bad regulator. Okay, so yeah, this one's bad. Uh, but this one here should be able to power up these two sections. So we should be able to get power all the way out to here. And then it comes this away. I'll leave this off. And um, we won't be using these two, these two here. All right, we'll give that a try. All right, I, I didn't tell you, I also had disconnected the outputs, the, the plus five and the plus 10. I didn't, I disconnected them. So it, this, this, this thing was floating. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to power up only the first section here, um, which is this wire is the minus five for that section, and this wire is the plus ten for that section, and then these two wires also go onto those connections for this part. But I'm not going to wire this up, so I'm going to solder these two down, and we'll power up just the front section, and see if we can't get it to go. Ow! Ow! Burn my finger. All right, so let's connect power up again. Let's see if we can power up the front front section here. And uh, it looks like it's not powering. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I got to connect the. Uh, I got to connect this 15 as well. All right. All right, so now the 15 goes through. Let's go ahead and hook it up. Uh, we are getting one amp. Okay, one amp sounds sounds good. Let's make sure our voltages are still stable. Um, we have 15 going in. We have plus 11 going out and minus 4.8 going out. So I say that's all good to go. So this front section now should be able to do something. So let's, uh, let's put in some RF and we'll sniff along the way and see if, uh, if we can see anything. All right. Let's turn spectrum analyzer on and we will use a, uh, a non-contact probe. I did a video on these things. Um, and we will introduce some, let's see, this thing is one to two gigahertz. So let's put in one gigahertz and see if, um, see if we can trace it through the circuit. All right. Let's see. Okay, so we, we want to do frequencies of one gigahertz. I'll do a span of uh, zero. So we're right at one gigahertz. So if we turn on the tracking generator, we'll be outputting a CW signal of one gigahertz and looking at the one gigahertz. This is time. It's not frequency now, this is time with a zero span. I did a video on that. Um, let's see here, so tracking generator minus 20, probably reasonable. Let's turn that down. Let's, let's go down to minus, minus 30. Now, that's as far as we can go down. Um, you know what? I am going to assume this thing takes a pretty low input because it's got so many stages. So I'm going to put an attenuator in the front. I'll put a, uh, I'll put a 20 dB attenuator in the front. And I think that will make me feel better and maybe make the amplifier feel better. All right. All right, so at minus 20, we're now inputting minus 40. Uh, so we'll see if I can amplify minus 40 up to something. All right. Uh, okay, that, 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 that tracking generator is going to go on. And I can't see anything here because the, because it's very, very low. Let do attenuator on the amplitude, let's set that to zero. And can, yes, I can see. Okay. So uh, you can't see what I'm seeing. All right, so uh, as I bring the probe near the front, it's going up. You can see it go up by about 10 dB. And then I'm gonna trace through the circuit. Here it's bigger, uh, it's working. So here's the input. The input's about, let's say minus 70. And then we get over to here. We're now up to around minus uh, 55, 56. And then on the output, we're up here around minus 40. So uh, let me show you that all on camera. 
so you can see what I was probing. Okay, so I was probing here, getting a small little signal. Then I come along to this first transistor and it got a little bit bigger. Come along to the second transistor and it got a little bit bigger. And then I'm coming out to this output here and it got really, really big. So this front end amplifier is working, working really, really good. Uh, we're starting out at about, let's say we start out at minus 70 and we end up at, uh, we end up at 40, 43. Yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty healthy. All right, so the front end works and we are drawing uh, one amp at 15 volts. So that is 15 watts of power going through this thing. Now, as we go up the chain here and uh, we turn on this section, I believe the, the a current draw is going to go through the roof um, because of these pass transistors. Each one is probably, probably most of this current is that last transistor there. So let's say it's one amp to, to do that one. Then it's two amps, three amps. So we might be able to get away with it. I'll, I'll wire up this section here see if my little three amp power supply can handle it or not. Otherwise, we're gonna to have to find a, a, a bigger power supply. Okay, so now we have uh, this section here wired up, which is these two FLL120s, uh, which are pretty power hungry. So let's see if uh, three amps is gonna be enough for this or not. Uh, okay, power this up. Ooh, 2.9, yeah, okay, okay. I think I can just squeak by. So let's uh, let's hook this up. It's drawing a bunch of current. Let's check the voltages on here. We're getting, no, our plus 10 has crowbarred to 0.4 and our minus five have crowbarred to minus 2.7. So I think we're current limiting on the input. I need to find a bigger power supply.